So we want to create a new question in Macro Hill Connect in such a way that every student gets a different set of parameters. Let's see how. The first thing is to sign in. Once in there, choose the section that you will be adding that question as part of an assignment. So we will add a new assignment here. And uh, we are given several options by Macro Hill Connect and we will choose Question Bank. Once there, instead of choosing questions from the ones in the bag corresponding to each of the chapters of the book, oh no, none of that. None of that. What we do is we click here in this menu and we choose Create Your Own Question. And that is what we're going to do. Now, what type of new question are we going to create? Numeric response, perhaps? No, surprisingly, not like that. So we go to the very end of that menu and uh, here we find Worksheet. I know it is an unexpected name, but that is a name for the types of questions into which parameters change from student to student. So it's a worksheet question. Now, a worksheet question for us will have four different aspects of it to form. One will be the question itself. This tag here. The other one will be random variables, that is the variables that will change from student to student. The third one is media, what figures we will add to our question. And the last one will be worksheet answers, where we store the computed answer that depends on the random parameters and against which we will compare the answer of the students. So let's begin with question. Let's say we want to create a question, a simple one. The first thing, of course, is give it a title. I'm going to call that Assignment 1, Question 01. And then I click in Worksheet Question, where we actually type the text of the question, and we wait remember to have activated the JavaScript so that the JavaScript editor can take care of your request. Once there, when it's active, so you click twice there and type your question. For a rectangle with a height equal to, and uh, instead of giving a number to that, we say no, no, no. We're going to be using a random variable. What variable is that? I can call it anything. I will call that H. Um, but we don't want to show the variable itself, but rather what is inside the variable, the notation that Macro Hill Connect uses is H is the variable, and H between brackets like so is the value stored in the variable. So a rectangle that has a height, brackets H, centimeters, and the width. Again, let me use another random variable. I'm going to call that W. Could call that almost anything. I will show the contents of a random variable W. Of course, I have not defined either H or W. That is for later, all right? So bear with me for now. For a rectangle with a, a height H, centimeters, and the width W, centimeters, compute the area area and enter it below. Well, that takes care of one of the four aspects of this question, that is the description of the question, the worksheet question. But in that worksheet, we will include more than that. Let me type enter and go to the next line, and I will include a figure. I go to media for figures. Remember, for where the aspects question, random variables, medium for figures, and worksheet answers for the responses. Well, let's go to media. In media, we need to choose a file, but we haven't chosen any. So choose a file. I go to the directory where I know that the file is as a box JPEG. There, open. The file has been chosen but not loaded to the server, so I click Upload and after a few seconds, there it is. Box.jpg is 
already in the server and ready to be included in the figure. I go back to the question tag and then I double click and right there where I want that, that picture I click on this icon here insert image it shows me the menu of all the figures that I have uploaded to the media tag and there is only one that is I click that one and I click OK there is one catch with the figures right so even though it is true that this editor apparently allows me to change the width the height of a figure the reality is that whenever I try that I save it I go away and come back the figure remains the size that it had originally so I have concluded that I cannot trust the change to size um, facility of the editor at least not in this uh, version of the editor and uh, what I do is to make sure that the figure will have the right size for my students to see I go to Photoshop before importing the figure and make sure that the figure has a width no more than 400 pixels I like 400 pixels for for the size of that fine so we've covered two of the three aspects the question and the media that is the figures but there are the two random variables which ones H and W those are the variables that will contain generated random variables that will change from student to student so H and W I go click on random variables and of course I find that there are no variables defined we click to the button new variable and uh, we have a choice local variable is a variable that is local to only this question and global if we want to share uh, that uh, variable with uh, other questions within the same assignment ours is local and the name is going to be uppercase H and now how is that random variable uh, going to obtain its value I say well you know what um, H is going to be a value between 5 and uh, 25 in increments of 3 why not right and I create a variable and it um, feedbacks us saying age is local it is generated in increments of 3 over the range between 5 and 25 we're done let's create another variable variable local as well the variable W but this one just to show you another option instead of giving a range and increments no I will say the width will be one of the following values right 10 comma 17 comma uh, 21 comma 27 comma 33 create and it feeds back is a hey W is a local variable chosen from one of those five values there and we are ready so let's repeat we have seen the question we have covered what random variables are used in the question we have included a figure from media what is left well what is left is to receive from the student his or her answer compare that against the computed result and um, and uh, that is done the following way I write it uh, here down right down here right down here there um, I write area equal to the name of the variable to compute the area of course I, I, I would I will call that just area like that in uppercase area area however that is going to be the worksheet answer variable in which I will compute the the actual the correct answer uh, but I need to create a dialog box for the student to enter his or her her response and compare that against the area to do that around the name of that uh, worksheet uh, variable I include a leading two underscores and uh, a, 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 a trailing two underscores and there is that centimeters square uh, let me get really really fancy I don't want it uh, I don't want um, centimeters square like that you, you see this way I said no I can do better than that now instead of writing 
the units like that, that is acceptable, right? I want to do something prettier. Let me delete this and instead I'm going to use the equation editor of my Grow Hill Connect. I click here on this uh, square icon and uh, an editing box appears into which we can write, let me choose here, um, this combination, centimeters, square, and we're ready. Let me click OK and look, look how nice that looks. Excellent. We're almost ready. There is one aspect still that needs to be included. The variable area is what uh, Micro Hill calls a worksheet answer variable. So, as I said before, we covered the question, so the random variables that we show to the student, the media that has figures in, and we are to include the one random variable that we have in this question. We can have more than one. Random variable, of course, there is none here. So, add a new answer. What type of answer? It's going to be a numeric response. The name of that will be area, and that has been created. However, uh, watch the definition, click on the name area, and now we can write here what is the correct answer. If I write there a number, the answer will be correct with the same value for every student in the class. But in our case, we know that it's not true. To compute the area, I take the value inside the width variable and multiply that times the value in the height variable. That's what we do. How wide uh, the response box is going to be? Seven characters is fine. The precision, yeah, the tolerance that we will accept. Um, very often for other questions I say a percent error of two. Normally that's what I do, right? I am, but in this case, because the answer is going to be an integer, I say no, 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 um, no tolerance. The exact question is the only one that will give the students all the credits. Save the answer. And uh, now that it's saved, we go back to the question. And we are ready. Let's review. We have checked what the question is, the description. We define the random variables h and w, we included a one figure in the media, box.jpg, we chose it and we uploaded it and then included that in the figure using that little icon that we saw up here in the editor, this little icon here, insert image. And last, we defined what is the worksheet answer, area, computed like this. So, save the answer and exit. You want to save the answer before exiting? Yes, that's what I want. That's very good. And now we exit the creation of that question. Altogether exit. It will complain, do you want to save this question before exiting? Yes, yes. And immediately it complains, hey, your question has no defined feedback. Are you sure you want to continue and save it anyway? Um, let me show you what feedback it's referring to. Let me go back here to the question, all right? Apart from the question itself, McGraw-Hill Connect allows you to include some explanation for students if you want to, the solution to the problem if you want to, um, and some other information, all right? Hints, etc., etc., etc. In this case, I'm not including any of that, and that's why it's warning me, are you sure you want to post that question without any feedback? Yes, I don't care about feedbacks for this question. I say, yes, yes, I want to store it like that. Then it goes back to the editor. It's opening the, uh, the, the editor right now, and uh, the editor has now only one question, question A1Q1. The type is worksheet and the weight of that question in your assignment, well, it has 10 marks for now. I, I can change that in, in this box, right? But I'm not going to do that. And then it shows us a preview of the question. And in the preview, we, we, we see the 
question that we defined. The height is 11 centimeters, the width is 31 centimeters, and in that case, the area should be 341 square centimeters. By the way, this is for the benefit of the instructor that we actually get a solution there. The student, of course, will get a blank box. And that is all. That is, we create a question in Macro Hill Connect in such a way that each student gets a different set of values. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again in the next video.